Hey guys, welcome to Woodwork Life. So today I'm gonna to show you how to go from rough sawn lumber, one of the cheapest ways you can get your lumber, to something that's square and straight and ready to prepare. Uh, a bunch of people have done this many different times on a bunch of different channels, so I try to do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna actually show you preparing it by hand and then preparing it with only machines. Now generally in my shop, I do it kind of hybrid anyway, but I'm just gonna lock it down to just one or the other. I'm gonna to try to show you how long that takes with hand tools versus power tools. Obviously the power tools are gonna to win, and I'll try to subtract out the time for switching camera angles and whatnot. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we'll start with doing our first board by hand. We'll also start the timer too. Like I said, I'm gonna try to subtract out the time when I'm changing camera angles and whatnot. Um, so we'll get rid of this knot and get something to, that's easier to work with. All right. So we've got our initial cut and now we gotta work on flattening off one of these faces. Uh, for this, I'll use a scrub plane. Um, this is one that I've modified from a, a cheap stand. I think you can get it off Amazon for like 15 bucks. I'll link that in the description. Just got a, a serious camber uh, grounded in the iron. So it's really easy to make, especially with one of these cheap planes. Um, but that allows you to just get really thick shavings. So I've got a high spot here. And... Got a little bit of a high spot here. And then this is where it cups. So I got a little bit of everything going on here. So I'll real quickly just take off the top layer with my scrub plane. Take a little bit shallower cut than that. You can see here where I have a pretty deep cup. I haven't even touched that yet, so we'll just keep working. So I've got it pretty well scalloped. And I got pretty much most of the surface broken down. There's a little bit of chip out, but that's to be expected with the scrub plane. Now, I need to start working on it lengthwise, and for that I'll move to my jack plane. All right, so now that we've kind of removed that surface and done some basic uh, flattening, we can go to our jack plane and just remove those scallops. Let's check that. Still got a little bit of a high spot on this edge, so I'll mark that. A little bit of high spot here, and got a little belly there. Still got the edges here. And you just keep testing until you get it just right. And we're close enough. That's as flat as, we're, as we need to be. All right, so we got one side ready to go. Now that we got a side, we just need to move on to an edge, and we're gonna get our vise out for that. 
All right, so I've worked up a pretty good sweat now. Um, so we've got the face flattened. Now we need to set an edge referenced off that face. So over here, I'm actually doing pretty good. You can't see much light coming through, but I still need to take a surface off. And then if you go further down here, you can see over here, I'm actually pretty far off onto this side. So I've got a, I've got a high spot. Uh, I guess I got a high spot over on this side. So I'll mark that again with a pencil and just get to working with it. The longer the plane is that you use, the uh, more accuracy you're going to have. So we'll use our number five again for this. Now if you want to take, so like my high side's over here, if you want to take that high side down, just try riding your finger on that side of the tote. It'll take just a slightly favored towards that side your finger's on shaving. All right, so now we have our face flattened and one edge. So at this point, we want to mark it so that we can keep track of where we're at. So I'll put a, a cursive F right here and then a cursive F right here. That way, mark this is the face side and this is the face side so we can make all our measurements off this. Our next step is going to be to uh, now square this far edge to our straight edge that we've made. And um, we'll do that with a marking gauge. Uh, you could do this to a point where you need to rip. Um, and they also make, you can also make or buy panel gauges that do this a little bit easier. But a marking gauge is good enough. And this gives us a parallel line to the face that we just squared up. And we always want to reference off that face from this point. All right. Now we've got our line. Now, depending on how much stock you need to remove for what you need, you can either plane to that line or you can uh, rip to that line. In this case, I'm just going to plane to that line. Right. Now it's time for my least favorite part, which is flattening the opposite face. Uh, this is not particularly complex. And again, you're just using your marking gauge to figure out where you want to cut down to. I'm going to try to remove as little stock as possible to maintain the thickness. And since you know you have two parallels and you have a face that you've registered off of, you can mark from that face. So I'll set my depth. I want to remove enough, but not too much. I'll just go ahead and mark my line. All right, got one side. The opposite side. All right, so I don't really need to remove a whole lot on this side. I need to remove quite a bit on this side. So let's get that going. We'll go back to our scrub plane. All right, as far as preparing this face, I am dripping with sweat and I'm out of breath and I'm just about done on my last couple strokes. So I took again the, uh, the scrub plane and took off most of the bulk and now I'm just taking off the scallop marks with my number five. I went down to my line on both sides and I checked for flat regularly and now I'm just getting the last little details, almost using it like a smoothing plane, but just getting a nice flattened surface. Okay, I think we're just about there. A little belly in the middle, a little belly, a little belly, take a couple shavings off the middle here. And 
Just got a little bit more to go. Oh, and we're there. I made this. Before I started, it was bigger. You will want to work off your first face edge on both sides. And preferably, you'll want to mark your line with a knife so you can get a nice precise cut. Now some people will cut right to the line, but I still like to use the line as a point of reference to cut to. Even though I don't put my saw blade actually into that kerf, it makes it a lot easier to square, square the board off on the shooting board after the fact. And carry your line around the whole edge of the piece. All right, hopefully you can see our scribed line there. We'll get our number five that we're gonna use for shooting. And we'll just work towards that line. There we have it, I'm out of breath and dripping sweat as you can see by the wet spot on the board. And now we have a board with six parallel faces, six parallel edges, and it's ready for any kind of joinery you want to do with it. Now let's see what we can do with machines. Hopefully this time it'll go a lot faster and maybe I won't sweat quite as much. All right, now with machines we're gonna do basically the same thing, but this time we're gonna square up that first face using my jointer. Fortunately, this board's right at six inches, so I can slide it right through. But it's dry as heck though, so you can hear it's chipping out, and it's not gonna be a very smooth thing. We'll still need some sanding after I'm done. Once you true up that face, it's really on to just squaring up the perpendicular edge. A 90 degree cast iron fence makes quick work of that. You can hear that I've got a little bit of a bow in this board, but the spinning blade and the jointer really makes quick work of this. This is a terribly dangerous tool though, so be very careful when you're using a jointer. Now you may notice I'm not double checking my results with a square on these, and that's because I've set up these machines and I know they produce 90 degrees. Now I'll check the next day before I actually cut joinery into these boards, but I know they're coming out 90 when I'm doing them. They might just move a little bit as they acclimate to my shop. And now, instead of marking a line and ripping to that line and planing to that line and doing all those details as simple as setting it up against the fence and ripping the opposing edge on the table saw. Knowing your stocks with machines follows the same order of operations as by hand, so the next step is just to true up the opposing face. I know my planer doesn't have a guard on it, I need to find a new one, but I still have to use it, so I'm just going to be very careful. A couple passes, and I have another parallel face. And now to cut perfectly square opposing edges of the board, it's as simple as busting out the crosscut sled. I don't have to use a crosscut saw, don't have to use a shooting board. Now my normal workflow, I do still use a shooting board to fine tune the fit, but for the sake of demonstration, let's just stick with a crosscut sled. And we're done. The total lapse time of the machines is about seven minutes. And honestly, I didn't even take any time to sort out how long it took me to move the cameras on that one. So there we have it. Um, I've got two prepared pieces of stock. I have a whole bunch of chips and shavings. 
and I've gotten my work on it for the day. Uh, it, either way is fine. Um, some people find it cathartic to prepare stock by hand, and it is a good skill to have. It lets you understand a lot about how wood grain works and the right way to plane and the right way to even feed it into machines. It just helps you really learn the grain directions. But um, once you really start doing more bulk work or you know you want to start working with hardwoods on a more regular basis it's not really that expensive to get into machines buying second hand my planer was 180 off craigslist my jointer was 150 my table saw was 150 you really don't have to spend a whole lot to get yourself started with machines or with hand tools for that matter so thanks for joining me today if you really like this video please drop me a like below consider subscribing um, and let me know in the comments if you've struggled with you know kind of getting over that hump to work with solid hardwoods or, you know, prepare your own stock by hand rather than buying the S4S stuff from the home centers. So thanks for joining me today. And remember, keep your tools sharp and keep your mind even sharper. Have a good one, guys.